Hi there, I'm Dale Emery. I'm the DHE of DHE modules. I want to talk about my Zycloid module. Zycloid was inspired by uh, a reply from Andrew Belt. I had released another module called Cubic, and Andrew said, oh good, a math module. We need more math modules. Well, that inspired me to go look for more fun math stuff to do. And I found a shape uh, called a hypotrochoid. And uh, you don't need to know that name, but now you do. Uh, it's essentially the shape you can draw with a spirograph. And this, this is a hypotrochoid. And there's a related shape called an epitrochoid. You don't need to know that name either, but now you do. And so this inspired me to develop this zycloid module. And I developed it entirely visually without any idea of, of how or whether it could be used musically. So I, I first want to walk you through what the main controls do visually. And we've already seen the depth knob a little bit, but let's describe that. The depth knob determines how far the shape extends toward or past the center, how far the loops extend. So that's, that's the depth knob, how far the loops extend. We can draw the loops in, inward or outward. The switch determines whether they're drawn inward or outward, the uh, epitrochoid versus hypotrochoid. And again, the depth knob determines how far the loops extend toward or past the center. So that's the depth knob. Pop that back up there. The ratio knob determines the number of loops. So the higher the ratio, the more loops. The smaller the ratio, the fewer loops. So that's that. And the speed knob determines the drawing speed. We can slow that down a lot. It also determines the drawing direction. We can draw in the other direction by reducing the speed below the zero point in the middle. Uh, another, here's a knob that I've, uh, a couple of controls that I've added that haven't been released yet. One is this phase knob. And the phase knob allows you to adjust the orientation of the shape, where the loops fall in the whole cycle. And this is most useful when we're in lock mode, and that's another new control added in this uh, as yet unreleased version of Zycloid. The lock mode says whatever you set for the ratio, we're going to take the closest integer and make that the number of loops. Now, it might sound a little weird to say that we have a, a not integer number of loops, but here's what happens. You can set the number of loops that's just a little more than an integer, and it'll spin one way, and just a little less than an integer, and it'll spin another way. So it, it tends to cause the, the shape to move if you have a number of loops that's not an integer. So we can get the shape to move over time. If you want to lock it down, use the lock button, and it draws the same shape every time around the loop. So that's visually what Zycloid does. Now I want to demonstrate it, um, what it does to the sound. And to start that, I'm going to turn the gain down on the X and Y output and turn up this patch that I've created using a, a mutable instruments resonator being tickled by a square wave. And that's sort of the plain sound. And as thrilling as that is, let's see what happens if we start to modulate it with Zycloid. So we start to hear the main effect of Zycloid, which I call throb and wobble. There's a lower frequency pulsing, the throb, and a higher frequency pulsing, 
that I call Wobble. Let's add the X into a different parameter. And that's the main effect of Zycloid right there, is that there's a wobble riding on a throb. And each output, well, the X output of Zycloid is two sine waves added together, and the Y output is two cosine waves added together. We'll talk about the relationship between those two in a minute, but for now, let's focus on um, the X output. Let's get some more of the X output on the screen. You can see that we've got this faster wobble sine wave riding on a slower um, throb waveform, uh, sine wave. And when we look at it this way, the depth knob determines what proportion of the entire signal is wobble and what proportion is throb. So it, it determines what proportion is wobble. So if we turn this down, notice that the wobbles get smaller and smaller. And you can hear that. If we turn it all the way down, we get only the throb sine wave. As we turn it back up, the wobble comes back in. And at this point, the wobble starts to dominate. If we turn it up all the way, the entire waveform is the wobble waveform, the faster waveform. Now, I've arranged this so that when the two sine waves are in phase, they will peak at plus 5 and minus 5 volts. <clears throat> they don't always peak at the same place. Um, and well, I'll talk about how to get them to align in a minute. So that's the, the depth determines how much wobble there is, and the ratio determines how fast the wobbles are compared to the throb. How many wobbles per throb? And the speed knob determines the throb frequency. Let's turn the ratio down a bit and lock it, and I want to demonstrate something. So now that we know how to get the wobble ratio to be what we want compared to the throb ratio, the, the throb speed, and we know how much, how to dial in the amount of wobble we want. There's another thing that we want to do, and if if you look at this waveform, you see uh, actually if you listen to it, at on each cycle you hear a sort of a main accent followed by a slightly lower accent. An accent is the third element, I think, of zycloid. There's throb, wobble, and accent. Where do the accents fall in the wobble cycle? So right now we have a, a larger accent followed by a slightly smaller one. The phase knob adjusts the phase of the phase offset of the wobble uh, cycle. And if we adjust this, it adjusts where the accents fall. So now we have a smaller accent ahead of the main accent. Go in the other direction, we can we can even get the two accents approximately the same. There we go. sort of have two accents at this at, on each cycle and if we adjust to a different uh, so 
So the phase knob essentially is is adjusting where you want the accents to lie. And that's when we look at the X output. The Y output behaves similarly. I'm going to bring that back in and show a potentially interesting thing. Is that the... Let's get a different ratio here. The shapes are not exactly the same. They're not peaking at the same place and and the pattern of accents is not even the same. And that's because the red line, the Y output, is a cosine waves, which basically lead or lag, I forget which, um, sine waves by 90 degrees. So they're always going to be off uh, in some direction or another. And you can potentially make use of that musically. So for right now, we adjust the phase in one direction. Let me turn the speed down a bit so that we can hear. We're adjusting two different parameters, and we can hear that the parameters are being adjusted at different times. They're peaking at different times. So we've got that Y parameter adjusting this sort of grit, and the, the X, the blue, adjusting sort of a, I don't know, I don't know how to, how to phrase that, but the grit is peaking ahead of the, the other parameter. If we adjust the phase, we can sort of adjust where they fall relative to each other. Try a different. So, depending on which parameters you choose to modulate with Zycloid, you can get them interacting in a potentially interesting way. And the phase sort of determines how they peak relative to each other. So the speed knob, when I showed it visually, we could see that a positive speed draws in one direction and a negative speed draws in the other direction. The result of that is if I draw, so notice right now that the, the um, Ys are peaking just ahead of the uh, X signal. If I draw the signal in the other direction, we change the orientation, we change which one peaks first, I guess. Now, in my mind, the phase knob is most interesting when you're in lock mode. When you're in free mode, the shapes can drift. You notice that, uh, let's the phase drifts over time and the accents will drift and this can make a nice variation from one wobble to the next if you don't want them to repeat exactly put put zycloid in free mode and the pattern of accents will drift over time now in this case i'm not sure whether the phase knob is particularly useful but people seem to find all sorts of creative uses for things that I didn't think of. But in lock mode, you can really sort of lock down where the accents go with the lock mode and, and the phase knob. Someone recently suggested that I have a, a reset switch or a, a, a sync input, and I'm considering that for the next release of Zycloid so that you can uh, hit Zycloid with a pulse that will align the phases exactly as you want them to be aligned, and then I think you'll have complete control over the pattern of accents. For now, it doesn't do that, but anyway. All right, so that is Zycloid, and I look forward to hearing what you do with it.